very good morning children how are you all hope you are uh, doing very well okay so in the last class we have studied uh, a lot of things about uh, human heart okay and also we have learned about the blood pressure and also we have learned about the high blood pressure right so today we are going to see one more topic which is also very very important okay for the examinations right and the topic is circulation that is evolution in the transport system of animals so how the transport system changed from one like no from uh, from the beginning of the evolution so how did it change right or you can say from the lower level organisms to the higher level organisms how the circulation goes on right so that is how that is what we are going to study now in the ninth class already we have learned about a lot of phylums right when we have studied about the uh, phylum which is called as animalia we have learned about all the phylums which are in the animalia kingdom so if you remember if you remember they are protozoa porifera uh, nidaria cilentrata uh, platyhelminthes nematyhelminthes mollusca echinodermata annelida arthropoda and vertebrata prochordata so all these are the different phylums which you have learned and they are divided or you can say they are classified in such a way okay depending upon the body functions so now we will start from the lower level organisms that is from the unicellular organisms and how the circulatory system is right and how it changed right that is all we are going to study now so i want everybody to like no concentrate and listen to what i am telling you right right children, now what is the necessity of transportation why transportation should take place in our body okay now the transportation in our body or in any body okay so for now just we take the example of our human body transportation is basically for transportation of the nutrients right and also transportation of oxygen so from one place to the other place all you can say to all the cells and tissues even the nutrients has to go oxygen has to come and what are the carbon dioxide which is produced here i mean it has to get back to the blood and that is the reason why the transportation takes place in our body so already we have seen the deoxygenated blood we have seen the oxygenated blood and how it travels okay what are the blood vessels which takes them so that is all because of the like you know they they, they are uh, majorly they are doing something like what is that they are transporting the nutrients they are transporting the oxygen and they are bringing back the carbon dioxide this is the reason why there is a requirement of transportation of body just assume for a second that there is no transportation the blood is not carrying all these things to cells and tissues just assume it, or oxygen is not going to reach in every cell the cells will die and ultimately the person or the animal will die isn't it so that is the reason why transportation becomes a very very important role and now now we are talking only about the multicellular organisms but what about the unicellular organisms how the transportation takes place in their body right so now there are some uh, unicellular organisms like like no amoeba and paramecium so these are the two which you already know now for example i am taking the paramecium okay I'm taking the paramecium. Right, so if it is a paramecium or even it is amoeba, now what happens is the nutrients which are there, like you know, these are required for the body of a paramecium, right? So the paramecium, like you no, know, the nutrients will enter into the body of the paramecium, right? And now these these nutrients should go to each and every place of the body right or in the particular cell so now how they will move now there is a there is cytoplasm which is a liquid content which is already there in this paramecium right and now this cytoplasm which is here it is static it's not static it's not it doesn't stay one but in one particular place so it keeps on moving from one place to the other place so what happens here is they keep on moving for example now this is paramecium this is uh, cytoplasm so it is not static so what happens is it moves from like no it moves zigzagging okay like this 
So the 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 protoplasm and the cytoplasm it will move like this. It will move zigzagging like this. So and these movements are usually called as the Brownian movements. These are called as the Brownian movements. Okay. Brownian movements and because of these Brownian movements, what are the nutrients which are which have come here? They will keep on traveling like this and you know like they will go to each and every part of the paramecium. So paramecium what it is doing here because of the Brownian movements, it is sending the it is sending the nutrients to one place to the other place. So they easily move and because of this. So the mode of circulation in the paramecium or the amoeba is the Brownian movement only because of Brownian movements they are moving from one place to the other place the nutrients which are there in the body they are moving from one place to the other place and when you come to the respiration that is come to the oxygen there is no system to uh, give the oxygen to the other tissues and also that absolutely happens by the process called as the diffusion so here there is no necessity of a circulatory system because the Brownian movements and the diffusion process are taking place of this circulation as well as the oxygen that is I mean respiration. So now this is about the unicellular organisms. Okay children. So now we will talk about the uh, parazoans right. We will talk about the parazoans. So when you come to parazoans okay for example Or else you can also call them as the phylum porifera. Here porifera in the sense they contain a lot of pores on the body. Now for example if you take a sponge, you take a sponge which is in the uh, water, aquatic water, uh, marine water system, they have a lot of pores on the body. I mean the pores are there all over the body. Okay, this is how the pores are there all over the body. Now because it is a marine animal, it stays in the water. It stays in the water. So now it is fixed to a substratum like this. So it is completely fixed at the bottom. So now what happens is, that when the water moves like this, they will come into these pore-like structures and then they will go inside the body of the sponge. right? And that is how this water will bring the nutrients along with them and these nutrients when they come inside when they come inside there are cells there are cells okay for example i'm talking about the inner cell they have the flagellum they have the flagella which keeps on moving so now for example just uh, we'll write an example like this so if there are flagella now this flagella will keep on beating they'll keep on Beating, so what happens is they will send the nutrients to the random directions. So they will distribute the nutrients to the random direction. So this system, because the water is going inside and the flagella is beating the water so that the water can move in all directions, so that what is the necessity is it will distribute the nutrients. It will distribute the nutrients and that is the reason why they keep on beating and send the water to the different parts of the body. So on the whole, you can see this is a water canal system. Water canal system. So they are using this water canal system so that they can circulate, they can transport all the nutrients to the one part of the body to the other part of the body. And all the water, the waste material is there that will be released like this, which is called as the oscillum. So it will come out to the pore, which is called as the oscillum. So this is the a kind of uh, circulation which takes place in the parazones which is usually called as the porifera. Pori in the sense here it is nothing but the pores all over the body. Okay children so this is the second one we have learnt. Okay now we will go to the third one. Okay the third one is the nideria. These are all the phylums we are talking about. Okay so if you have any kind of doubt no you can uh, go to the ninth class right and uh, then 
you can check out the video of the animal kingdom animal kingdom and you can see all the phylums over there there are some four to five videos which i made on especially on the phylums which are there in the animalia kingdom so you just go and check them if you have really any kind of doubt on this different phylums which you are talking about okay now the next one is the nidaria nidaria you can see So this next one is the Nidaria. In the Nidaria, we will take the example of the animal which is the Hydra, which is called as the Hydra. Hydra is also a non-motile in the sense it will not, it's a stationary organism which will not move. Now this is the mouth, this is the mouth. So now it has a lot of tentacles on its body or finger-like projections which are basically called as tentacles on its body. Now, this is the mouth which is which it opens so that the water will come inside. The water will come inside, okay? And now when the water comes inside, this water will travel all over the cavity which is present in the hydra, okay? And this is called as the gastrovascular cavity. So now here, what are the things which comes here will be directly sent to the cells which are present in this and then whatever the undigested matter will be there, no like it will be again sent through the same place, right? So this the same opening is now used as the mouth and also used as the anus. It doesn't have a separate anus or it doesn't have a separate excretory system, okay? So here gastro in the sense nothing but a stomach, vascular cavity in the sense nothing but a kind of excretion right excretory organ so this cavity is doing the work of digestion and also it is doing the work of excretion so that's why we call it as the gastrovascular cavity so this is how the circulation takes place in the body of a hydra right hydra is an example for the nidaria right so the circulatory system here is the gastrovascular cavity gastrovascular cavity okay children so now, okay, so the next one what we see is the organism which belong to the phylum Platyhelminthes. So when you come to the phylum which is called as the Platyhelminthes, here the digestive system is highly branched. Okay, they don't have any other systems here. Okay, they, but the when you when you check the digestive system, no, it is highly branched, and whatever the things which comes inside the nutrients. The digestive system will send them to the all parts of the body because it is branched. It is completely branched. So now here the digestive system will play a major role in transporting the nutrients. So here in platyhelminthes, the digestive system itself is playing a major role in transporting the nutrients here. So it is actually actually uh, acting as a circulatory system. Okay, children. So that is about the platy. Helminthes. So the next one, what we are going to study is the Nematoda. We are going to study about the Nematoda. This Nematoda is also called as the Nemati Helminthes. So, but in shortcut we call it as now Nematoda. Okay, in the platy Helminthes, no, like you can take the example of the tapeworms, liver flukes. Okay, so these are the examples which you can. Uh, like take worms and you can find the intestines of the animals like buffaloes and also that uh, you can you know about that right and now coming to the nematoda in nematoda okay now this is the digestive system which is present here okay and this is the body wall this is the body wall and in between the digestive system and the body wall there is a special cavity which is called as the coelom and this coelom is a false cavity so we call it as the p s e u d o pseudo coelom so this cavity is called as the pseudo coelom so now here the pseudo coelom what is the function of the pseudo coelom is when these organisms which are uh, which belong to the nematoda will take the nutrients and the digestive system will digest them and they will send those nutrients to the pseudocelum 
okay this is the body okay it's a false cavity which is present here usually coelom is a cavity where like you no know, uh, the organs can be accommodated for example now here okay if it is here thoracic part and all here because of this cavity which is here because there is a cavity a uh, true coelom there are lungs and also the heart which are present over there so this particular cavity has heart and lungs so now this is the true coelom because a body organs are located over there they are giving some space for the organs to stay there so it is a true coelom there it's called as a true coelomic cavity but whereas when you come to the nematoda when you come to the nematoda here there is no true coelom here it it is a false coelom because no organs are accommodated here and what is the major function of this pseudo coelom is that it will send the blood it will sorry it will send the nutrients to various parts of the body so here the pseudo coelom is playing a major role role in transporting the nutrients to the different parts of the body so that is what uh, uh, the circulation process is in nematoda okay children so now the next one is okay children now we we'll come to the annelida we'll come to the annelida the phylum which is called as the annelida in the annelida you can take the example of a earthworm okay in which had they have the body segments like this okay now they have two blood vessels one is the dorsal blood vessel okay and second one is the ventral blood vessel and there are some five hearts here they have some five hearts and here the work of the heart is to send the blood into the okay into the blood vessels right and these blood vessels are the pulsatile blood vessels pulsatile blood vessels where they will pump the blood into various parts of the body various spaces in the body various spaces in the body to the head sinus okay to the ventral sinus to the dorsal sinus these blood vessels will pump the blood okay children so here annelida there is a pulsatile blood vessel now here until here before that there were no blood vessels there was no heart is it it but whereas here now they have the blood vessels now they have the blood vessels here and these blood vessels so like they are not like you no know, for example if you see this blood vessel it is directly pumping the blood into the open cavity that is uh, cavity is called as the sinus so directly sending the blood into the open cavity like this okay it is also open cavity so this kind of circulatory system is called as the open circulatory system is called as the open circulatory system so you can see the open circulatory system in the annelida because the blood vessels are just sending the blood into the open cavity right they are not closed as it is in the human body where in a human body each and every blood vessel which goes from like you no know, heart they will go to one particular part of the body and then it comes again back to the heart so ours is called as the closed circulatory system the heart and blood vessels are connected to the lungs and also to the other parts of the body so our is called as the closed circulatory system but whereas here they are called as the open circulatory system okay so here right so, so this is the annelida where you can see the pulsing and blood vessels itself they are pumping the blood to the different parts of the body or different tissues of the body so after annelida after annelida now coming to the arthropoda in arthropoda what you can see is the insects what you can see is the insects all the insects are in the phylum which is called as the arthropoda so in this arthropoda these are like you know, they have developed the pulsatile organ they have developed the pulsatile organ for example 
if you see the cockroach, they have 13 beads of hearts here. You know how many hearts are there? There are around 13 hearts here. And all these 13 hearts, what they will do is they will send the blood into the open cavities. I mean, dorsal cavity, ventral cavity, sinus and head sinus. Okay, all these cavities, you know, like the hearts will from the blood. And what you cannot see here is the blood vessels. You cannot see any blood vessel in the arthropoda and here only you can see the hearts directly pumping the blood into the open cavities, right? So that's why, okay, now here these hearts, these arthropods have developed an organ for the pumping of the blood. Okay, so now here this organ is nothing but the heart. Whereas in all the other ones where we have studied, it's not a pulsatile heart we have seen in the Annelida, it's only a like you no know, a structure where it sends the blood to the vessels. Vessels are pulsatile here. Vessels are throwing the blood to the different parts of the body here. But whereas in the cockroaches, the first heart is developed here. You, you will not see any kind of structure in all the phylum which we have studied till now. So here, so these hearts are the ones which are circulating or transporting the nutrients from the one part of the body to the other part of the body. So and now. In mollusk also, maximum the uh, like you know, the circulation is like uh, the cockroach and all it have the same open kind of circulatory system. But whereas when you come to the echinodermata, it is completely different over there, right? So they have the ring-like canal and the radial canals, right? So like this, so the the water will come inside. They don't have the blood actually. They don't have the blood, so the water will come inside and they will get the nutrients with them, and they will be circulated to the different canals of the body and that is how they will survive so they don't have the proper uh, what do you call uh, uh, transport a system like with the help of heart and the blood wells and also the blood is not at all present in them so that is how the echinodermidas uh, uh, transport system comes to an end so by this we come to the different phylums and also and there is vertebrate and uh, there is what we are going to discuss tomorrow along with one more topic which is uh, coagulation of blood so these are the two topics which you're going to discuss tomorrow so don't miss the class okay children uh thank you and have a great day take care bye